Hey everybody, welcome to the show into the West Texas Hill Country. You know, there's a big challenge among a lot of deer breeders is the challenge is trying to figure out a way to grow the biggest, prettiest, cleanest, typical whitetails they can. And it is difficult. But we're gonna introduce you to a man that he's got that all figured out. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. This is the western part of the Texas Hill Country. We're just outside of Rock Springs, Texas in Edwards County. And this is actually the first time that I've ever visited this deer farm. The cool thing about doing deer and wildlife stories for me is that I get to see different places and meet different people and, uh, and get to see everybody has got kind of a different strategy about the way they go about their business. And so coming out here, the strategy, I love the strategy here because it's different. Uh, my name is Rowan Smith, the owner of Deer Star Breeders. Our place is in Rock Springs, Texas, and uh, we breed a lot of typical deer. We're, we're a typical deer breeder, and we've evolved into that over the last nine years, and we're excited about showing you these deer. All right, so clearly these are three-year-olds in the pen, right? They are, correct. All right, boy, they're coming up good now. They're, they're wanting that feed. All right, this left trough right here, right in the middle. Who is that? That's a heck of a nice looking deer right there. That's Alamo, that's a, a Batman son we've got. Wow, boy, look at him. Yeah, see, that's the kind of look right there. That is beautiful. Nice long tines, really, really nice, okay. Whoa, who's that right there? Yellow 111, who in the world is that out of all of them? He's the prettiest one there for, to me anyway. Yeah, that's a, another superstar son. Is it really? It is. You know, the, the thing is, I, look at that deer now. Okay, yellow 111, he is uh, he's beautiful. I mean, he's got everything that I think that most people want to see. I mean, he's, got, he's got it all, he's beautiful, symmetrical. And how much Texas is he? He's probably around 96%. Really, so he's virtually 100% Texas, which is a really cool deal, because there's a lot of people that are now, have so much northern influence in their herd that they don't have this clean, typical look as these deer do. Now your two-year-olds, we're gonna take a look at some two-year-olds in a little bit that are uh, really the the result of the program that y'all implemented a few years ago so we can see how much more clean they are even than these guys. But that Superstar son, he is absolutely beautiful. Now y'all may be wondering who Superstar is and what we're gonna do. We're gonna have Rowan tell you about Superstar. Uh, Rowan lost him here recently, but uh, he had a tremendous impact upon these deer and you can see yellow 111 right there and uh, Rowan's actually got some video of him from year to year to year and you're going to see why he's such a special deer. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, UVC Power Sports, the North American Deer Farmers Association, Advanced Deer Genetics, New Dart, Divine Genetics, the North American Deer Registry, Protect the Harvest, Headgear LLC, Southwest Fabricators, High Roller Whitetails, Big Buck Draft, and Premier Deer Auction, and Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics. Viewer feedback is presented by Protect the Harvest, Protect the Hunt. All right, from our Facebook page, can you please explain why some wildlife authorities oppose baiting for deer because they say it's a way that CWD gets spread around, yet they allow hunters to plant food plots to attract deer? Maybe you can help me understand this logic. I can't. 
I can't explain to you why that is other than they just don't want to bait deer. I don't know of any research data out there, maybe you do, if you do, please share it with me, that supports the decision that baiting deer is going to spread CWD any more than having a water hole is going to spread CWD. Again, if you've got any research and know any research, please share it with me. And you can do so by going to our website and hitting the Connect with Keith tab. So you take a look at their sign, Deer Star, and it says, the look of Texas. Well, what is the look of Texas? What does it look like? Bam! Take a look at the pins. That's what the look of Texas looks like. Rowan's goal has been to grow big typicals, and, and I feel that we've really gone that route. Um, and it, it's, I feel blessed to meet his expectations and, and be fortunate enough to, to be able to make his dreams come true. Boy, you got some pretty deer. I mean, the one thing I noticed literally right from the get-go, the typical frames. Yes, sir, that's what we're going for. That's, that's one thing that we've been striving for the last couple of years and starting to show a little bit more consistency in what we're doing. You know, there's, there's, I guess, thousands of deer breeders around the country. And in Texas, I know there's, there's more than a thousand just in Texas. Yes, sir. But there's not very many deer breeders in Texas that are just focusing on Texas genetics. And that's the thing that really separates uh, this place from other places is the fact that they are focusing on Texas genetics and there are some, uh, there's some pluses and minuses in doing that. Uh, as a deer farmer, uh, the, the, you know, what we try to do, deer farmers, we try to grow deer as big as we can, as fast as we can. Except Texas genetics, you're not gonna do that with. Texas genetics take a little bit longer. They're longer maturing, but my goodness, when they get mature, they are so beautiful. The, the patience pays off. <laughs> yes, it does. And so, you know, a lot of people have brought northern semen in and impregnated their deer down here, so there's a big northern influence in their herd. But y'all have stayed away from that lately. Y'all have really just tried to focus on the Texas. We have. What we did uh, to start off, we've we brought in some bird all stuff on some Clint PB12 a lot of the foundation stuff from some of those guys and and we've kind of created our own hybrid I guess of all the mixture of all of them and, and kind of we're running with that line that we that we like that we see is working for us so and every one of these deer if uh, if a buyer is interested in every one of these deer is in the North American Deer Registry it is the majority of them are there's there's a few that aren't a lot of some of our younger ones they're not registered um, but when they become three um, about 95% of them will be. Um, okay, so I'm gonna ask you this. Um, which deer in here is one that you would say, we really wanna showcase him, which one? We really like Galaxy. He's a superstar son on our black 60 doe. That great big wide yes. yellow. Tank. Yes, well, he is, he's, he's wide. He's kinda got that little thing off the front of his antler. He, yeah, he's got the look that we're going for, just a big clean typical. He's got a few little extra points there, but um, we really like his, his pedigree and look. It's something that we're, we're pretty happy with. And his name Galaxy. Galaxy, yes, he's sir. He's a three-year-old. He is, and he's also got a wound brother named Solar Power that, that we like, too. He's not as wide, but he's, he's tall. He's, and which one is he? He's yellow 84 um, amongst the big group of them over there. I got him. I got him. And they're wound brothers. They are. They you are. know, and, and take a look. You take a look. Let's compare both those bucks. And they, they got... And they were born at the same time. I mean, womb brother. Same time. And so you got you got to think they one of them got the width and one of them got timely. Right. <laughs> they pass it on. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right there. It is. So if it had been a single fawn, they would have had had it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty nice, though. <laughs> How wide do you think Galaxy is? He's probably close to. 32 and a half, 33. Maybe. I mean, he's way he's over 30. There. I know he he's is. way over he is. 30. He's over 30. Boy, they're pretty though. They are some kind of pretty. I love that typical look. All right, so if somebody wants to come out here and, uh, and see this for themselves, give them a phone number, what do they need to do? You can call me at 830-683-7163 or you can send me an email at ranchmanager at texasreg.com. When you come out here, uh, bring a pair of binoculars with you and bring your camera because you're not going to believe what you're going to see. These are some of the prettiest Texas deer I've seen in a long, long time. 
Closed captioning for Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by G2 Ranch, where quality is our commitment. Brought to you by American Fair Chase Hunting Club. Just shut up and hunt. Hey y'all, I'm Timmy Edwin, president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club. And I got me a brand new internet game camera. And it takes pictures of everything out in front of it. And it magically beams it back home to my computer. And I can see everything that's going on. Hey. Hey. Who? Timmy, <laughs> I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Okay, all the hunters are using these game cameras nowadays. And you get so much great information from yes, it. Yes, sir. But what my question is, is using a game camera, is there fair chase hunting? Well, I don't know, Keith, what is fair chase hunting? I don't know, but I thought if anybody in the whole world could answer that question, it'd be you because you're president of the American Fair Chase Hunting Club. Oh, well, I don't know that, but I do know I caught two raccoons making whoopee right over there not on this camera. <laughs> well, you're going to catch all kinds of stuff on the camera, and the hunters are going to get all kinds of good information, but until you can figure out what fair chase hunting is, my recommendation to you is just shut up and hunt. Shut up and hunt? Yeah. Shut up and hunt. That's a good idea right there. I like it. Shut right, up Jim, and hunt. Good luck. See you. And folks, until y'all figure out what the definition of fair chase hunting is, use the hashtag just shut up and hunt on all social media posts. And I'd like to hear from you. What is your definition of fair chase hunting? Let us know using the hashtag just shut up and hunt. I want to tell you about this ranch. This ranch was a blessing from God. None of this would happen if it wasn't for God. He's the one that gave us this ranch, led me to buy this ranch, and has helped us to show us how to produce these deer. And if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have anything. I've been fortunate to have some pretty good people to work with me out here at uh, Deer Star. Our ranch manager, Taylor Ham, has been a real blessing. Uh, Taylor's uh, extremely knowledgeable in the deer industry, he's, especially with our pedigrees and our pedigree matching program. And he's an extremely valuable uh, commodity to me for this ranch. And we really appreciate what all that he does and all the other people that work out here we're appreciative of too. So we're doing the best we can and we keep getting better every year. The thing I enjoy most about this job is being able to look at whitetail every day. Um, just get in there and, and assess and, and problem solve is, is, is fun to me. To get out there and, and see a sickness that you might not have seen before, but to call other people in the industry and pick their brain about it or call the vets or, um, and then being able to put all that together and, and solve a problem is pretty fun to me. Well, that right there is about as pretty a group of two-year-olds as I've ever laid my eyes on. While most people in this industry are going with so much northern influence, that's the reason why they don't have deer that look like this. They've got that northern influence with lots of trashy stuff on them, you know, and some people like that. But for me, personally, I think that the industry is going more clean, more, more symmetrical stuff, and that bunch of deer right there has got it all. Now, if I was to use as few words as possible to describe what these deer look like, to me, it would be clean, typical, and pretty. I mean, that's the look of Texas, man. That's what we're going for. <laughs> that's the look of Texas. And something else, too, they're consistent. Really, when you take a look at them, I mean, they're, they're all consistent. There's not a knucklehead in the bunch. They I mean, they're, they're pretty deer. Across the board, they're, they're pretty typical. Boy, there's a nice one right there. Number 17, look at him. Golly, is he pretty. We really like what we're seeing in him. And then who is number seven? Wow. That's his womb brother. Is it really? It is. Yeah, let me guess. He's got some superstar in him. He's got the same line and the same. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me, golly. That superstar really has gotten it done. Man, and their wombs. They are. Those two are. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're we're finally getting to where we can we can see the product of what we've been working on for so many years. We just showed you all the three-year-old bucks here a little while ago, and if you take go back and look at this, uh, you'll be able to see how. I mean, most of the three-year-old bucks. I mean, there, there's a lot of nice long tines and all, but they've got some little trashy stuff starting on them. Okay, 
that was the year before you really got started in this program where you're totally dedicated and focused on clean, pretty, and typical. Right, yeah, and, and this is all of our own genetics. We haven't uh, AI'd the last few years, so these are all out of our own offspring. That's what's so exciting about it. As a deer farmer, when we can produce our own stuff, I mean, we're not having to outsource getting semen or embryos, whatever. We're producing our own stuff on our own farms. You know you're doing something right, and it makes you feel good, too. Right, it does. <laughs> it's a pretty rewarding to, to see see what you've been working on. Wow. Now, as you wind up, if, uh, if you're interested in the deer farming industry, you may be looking at it thinking, these two-year-olds don't score as much as some of the two-year-olds and some of the breeders that we'll feature on the program, and that's right. But the thing I want to point out too is the reason why is because these are Texas genetics. Texas genetics are just more hardy. And, uh, and there's people all over the country, over in Florida, before they closed the borders down, people were bringing in Texas genetics because they're, they're hardier, okay? And so these deer are Texas genetics. And Texas genetics are a little bit slower maturing than Northern genetics. And it's for that reason that uh, most people, want, you know, that most breeders want to put that northern influence in to get them big quick right but then they sacrifice the look right that's the risky part about going you know more texas is it does take a lot of patience to now, to see the end result and what's going to happen what's going to happen is that there are going to be people that are waking up and they're waking up every single day now realizing hey they want their deer to look like this they want clean pretty and typical in order to do that now they've got to get all that northern influence out of their herd that they've been putting in. And so it's gonna take many, many generations. But the cool thing here is you've got clean, pretty and typical available right now. We do, we do. And so if somebody wants more information, do they contact you or probably just contact Rowan they, directly? They can contact Rowan. Okay, all right. Those are some phenomenal deer. I just can't believe seven and 17 out of both of them, I think the prettiest deer in the pen, they're womb brothers. They you got are. their mama? They are, we do. <laughs> so everybody at home saying, I want the mama, because we all know that, I mean, yeah, Superstar may be getting it done on the top side, but on the bottom side, uh, the does are just as important. So that's a pretty good group of two-year-olds right there. If you're ready to get started in deer farming, go to deerandwildlifestories.com and click the Get Started Deer Farming tab. Superstar is an awesome buck. Now, Superstar was born on this ranch out of a breeding of a doe that was, a, this doe was a cross of the Birdall line and the Kotzer line, two old foundational pure Texas lines. And we took a, a buck that I bought called Super 727, crossed it with that doe that had all those Texas lines in it, and it produced Superstar. Superstar's been an awesome buck. He's probably the prettiest typical born in Texas that I know of. Uh, he's just huge, 34 inch inside spread, uh, great time length, beautiful frame, beautiful typical shape. It's just an awesome buck. When he was a yearling, he was a spike. And my manager at the time wanted me to release him on the ranch. I said, no way, I, I know the pedigree, I'm not doing it. This is the pedigree that we, we want to start with. This is our foundational Texas line pedigree. We want to keep it. So we kept him and uh, two years old, he got pretty nice, but nothing big. Some of these two year olds in our pens now are bigger than what Superstar was. So three years old, boy, he started taking shape. Man, he looked good. He had tall tines, kind of wide, but he had more of a basket wrap, but he was beautiful. Then at four, he took off a little more, a little more tine length, a little more mass, and a little more width. And then at five, he blew up. And that's his best year, that's his best rack. And then at seven this year, um, we bred him again. And this year, here in, in June, he died. And so we, he had a problem and we couldn't get it fixed. And now we're looking to his sons. And this, this is what we're looking forward to, is doing what, what we can with his sons and his daughters to, to make this, to keep our line going. You know, uh, it'd be easy to say that it's unique about what Rowan does out here as far as opening up his place to, 
people that want to come by and take a look at the deer and interested in buying deer, but it's not unique. The thing about deer farmers is their places are open. They're, they're out here in the wide open and they invite people to come in to see what they're doing. I mean, some people, he'll make them a nice dinner, put them up here in the lodge, and uh, he go out the next morning, look at your deer, pick them out. And the cool thing about it is, once you pick these deer out, you, you negotiate the price and delivery terms and stuff, Rowan brings them right to your place. You know, we're real friendly out here at Deer Star, so if you want to come out and look at our deer, you're welcome to come out. If you want to have a place to stay while you're here, we put you up in a nice lodge. We've got a great cook. we got all kinds of food you can have fun with, and it's a fun trip out here. When you come out here, it's just more than just looking at deer. It's fun. You're going to, something memorable that you're going to be able to take back with you and say, not only do they have great deer, but they're great people, and we want you to have great deer. So this is the first time we've actually ever featured this particular deer breeder on the show. And what I'm excited about is when we meet somebody and we do a program from their place, normally the next year, the next year, the next year, sometimes every year in a row, they have us back. And what is cool about this is because Texas genetics, well, they're kind of slower maturing than Northern genetics. But what I'm looking forward to is coming back here in about another two years, because the deer that we've shown you, especially these two-year-olds, when we come back and we show them to you when they're four years old, not only is it gonna blow my mind, but I think it's gonna blow your mind too. My name is Keith Warren. I wanna thank you for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. If you have any questions or comments and you're watching online, go ahead and post them below. And if you're not watching online, head on over to our website and make sure and sign up there. Thanks for watching.